out. Everybody. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Lights Out Podcast. Today, we're going to be diving into the world of cryptids. And specifically, we're going to be talking about the axe wielding Goatman of Maryland. This is an absolutely insane urban legend that, yeah, some people think is just a legend, but others believe differently that there may actually be a half goat, half man running around with an axe in the Maryland wilderness. But before we get into today's episode, I wanted to thank our sponsor for today. We've got every plate and also Halloween is a sponsor of this episode of the Lights Out podcast. Also, I wanted to remind you guys that there is still some Lights Out merch available from this very first collection. So if you want to cop some merch, definitely go check out milehiremerch.com and you'll find all of our newest drop there. And I wanted to remind you guys another way to support the show. If you're not able to buy some merch, you can actually support the show for free. All you gotta do is go to Apple Podcasts and make sure you're subscribed as well as following us on Spotify. It does really help us out because I know a lot of you like to watch the show on YouTube and that's the only place that you enjoy the show, but it does really help us out if you are subscribed on those other platforms as well. Because yeah, YouTube is technically not a part of the podcast world yet. Hopefully it will be one day. So it does help our performance and numbers there. We really do appreciate that. Like I said in previous episodes, though, it's been kind of hard to come up with topics for this month because every day is Halloween on Lights Out. So every topic is spooky. But I thought, you know what? We haven't really done a cryptid before. We did talk about an urban legend of the black eyed children previously, but we haven't really talked about a cryptid. If you're not familiar with what a cryptid is or cryptozoology is, basically it's the study of any type of creature or being for that matter, whose existence has yet to be either completely proven or completely disproved by science. So there's a lot of famous cryptids out there. Obviously you've probably heard of Bigfoot, Loch Ness Monster, Himalayan Yeti, but I wanted to cover a cryptid that maybe some of you have never heard of. And when I went digging into my cryptid archives, I came up with the goat man of Maryland because something about a half man, half goat, and we're talking goat head running around the forest, especially wielding an ax that could potentially kill you or even potentially be a shapeshifter, as I've heard, is actually very terrifying. Because I think one of the things that is most scary about, you know, the wilderness and just forested areas is that you never know what kind of creatures could be lingering. You know, we all know that there's different types of animals that could kill you out there in the forest. But I don't think a lot of people think about the idea of maybe there's some things out there that we don't fully know because they do have this human level of intelligence that you know came about a lot of different ways. And today we're going to be talking about a cryptid that came about as a result of an experiment actually that went wrong. So this idea of cryptids or there being half human, half animal type beasts out there is very intriguing to me and also very creepy to me as well. So that is why our first cryptid is going to be on the Goatman of Maryland. So according to this urban legend, the story of this half man, half goat beast who carries that ax or hatchet, which interesting choice for a weapon not exactly sure why he went that route but this idea that basically at night specifically is when this goat man comes out and attempts to attack both animals as well as humans it's been described as this large horned creature with both human and goat like features it can stand up to eight feet tall and weigh as much as 350 pounds most people who have encountered the goat man have either run for their lives as I think most of us would do, or it just scares them to the point where they're frozen in place. The reason why it's called the Goatman of Maryland is because many of the sightings of this creature have been in Prince George's County in Maryland, including around the cities of Beltsville and Bowie. I'm curious to see if anyone out there who lives in these areas of Beltsville and Bowie have ever heard of this Goatman before, because I think it's a pretty famous cryptid out there. Now to just give you some context of what these cities are like or these towns are like, Beltsville is just 7.2 square miles, so not very large at all, and includes the unincorporated area of Vansville. There's plenty of wooded areas around this town, obviously great places for a goatman to hide and stalk his prey. Several prominent first person accounts have been along Fletcher Town Road and Bowie. And this is a small stretch of road that spans about 1.7 miles 
running from Hillmead Road to Highbridge Road. And along this path are Northridge Park and Lake Evan, and a small portion of Horsepin Branch Stream. And the other town that the Goatman's been primarily sited in is Bowie. And this is currently the 14th largest city in Maryland by population with about eh, 59,000 residents or so in 2019. Now, there's been a significant increase from when the Goatman was first seen along Fletchertown Road in the early 1970s. And back then, the town was much smaller, roughly 35,000 people. So where did this beast come from? Well, the Goatman is believed to have originated in Beltsville, Maryland. And the town of Beltsville is actually named after a man named Truman Belt. And Truman owned Locust Grove Plantation back in the day. And going way back to 1835, he actually allowed B and O Railroad to construct a rail line through the plantation to connect Baltimore and Washington, D.C. Because this area is really just kind of east of Washington, D.C., our nation's capital, super populated area. But out here, it's very kind of wide open, lots of small towns, forested areas. And basically, he connected Baltimore and Washington, D.C. And, you know, this town of Beltsville kind of lies in between somewhat. And basically the station that was in between Baltimore and Washington, D.C. was named Belt Station after Truman Belt. And eventually this station turned into what has now become known as Beltsville, the town. The establishment of this railway system, along with the Baltimore-Washington Turnpike, brought many new residents to the town and helped Beltsville thrive. And it didn't take very long for this town to become a leader in agricultural research. And this advancement in agricultural research was marked by the opening of the Beltsville Agricultural Research Center, or BARC, in 1910, which was a part of the USDA's Agricultural Research Service. It's also the largest agricultural research facility in the world. And many people believe this is where the goat man was born, which when you hear a little bit more about the history, this doesn't become so far-fetched. Some of the key accomplishments at BARC included the discovery of multiple new forms of life and significant advancements in population genetics, a field of biology that studies genetic composition and variations within populations of species. The researchers at this BARC facility have been using livestock as subjects for their research since 1911, when the first dairy cows arrived at the center. And they have succeeded in manipulating and changing multiple animals' genetics, including breeding cows that produce more milk, leaner pigs, smaller turkeys, hens that lay larger, more well-shaped eggs, and hens that lay eggs more likely to hatch a chick that survives to adulthood. So, yeah, really messing with the genetics of these pretty normal animals in order to, you know, make them more efficient to eat and to produce for the growing population of this country. Researchers have also made the same types of genetic changes to a wide variety of plants and frequently worked with natural chemicals, disease-causing organisms, and newly discovered untested substances. So you can only imagine where this is going. The decade before the United States joined World War II, bark researchers were looking for an effective way to remove worm parasites from farm animals. From 1930 to 1939, they studied the effects of various drugs on horses, sheep, pigs, chickens, and of course, goats. One particular building on the campus, Building 434, was designated the Goat Barn. The Goat Barn is completely surrounded by fields and is only accessible from an unnamed road off Power Mill Road in Beltsville. And this unnamed road also connects to a private driveway to the southwest. So what was actually going on inside the Goat Barn in the 1930s? Could some of the experiments maybe that they were doing in there could have been, you know, kept a secret and off the record or maybe even illegal? Because this is uh, kind of interesting to think about. I mean, the United States has a very long history of illegal human experimentation, dating all the way back to the 1840s. J. Marion Sims performed surgical experiments on enslaved women and their infants without using anesthesia. He also didn't use medicinal pain relief like morphine or opium until after the surgeries to make the women more easily controllable. So that's just one example of illegal human experimentation done a long time ago. And obviously we've talked about MK ultra before in previous episodes, you know, there is a lot of, you, you can only imagine that there's probably still going on today, some level of experimentation on both humans and definitely on animals that we don't know about. And if we did, we would probably be shocked at what they're actually doing. And it's something that I truly believe that I think there's without a doubt 
some government entity or maybe it's military or maybe it's even private sector where people are experimenting with human genetics and animals and they've been trying to figure out a way to combine the two maybe you know to make some type of hybrid being whether that be you know can you imagine like a a half bear half human type of being like what would that even be like what animal human hybrid would you be most scared of I don't know why, but the first thing that came to my mind was like a human King Kong, you know, a straight up gorilla going on or something. And that'd be so scary. Like a Bigfoot. Yeah. Like a Bigfoot or something. Cause that'd be so scary to have on the loose. Cause how much damage something like that could do. It's like a giant Hulk or something like that. So I would, I would be down to see something like that. (laughs) (laughs) So straight up King Kong, like a, a genetically manipulated gorilla with some human DNA that so basically a gorilla that had the smarts of a human but also was massive would exactly be, yeah that would be fucking terrifying i mean if you've ever seen king kong yeah things got real bad they <laughs> did with they a, did. a giant gorilla roaming around but imagine if that king kong had like super human intelligence say it was just as smart as you are or smarter how scary that would be i don't think it's totally out of the question or totally crazy to think that you know there could be some type of group or organization or company out there that is testing on animals and humans and trying to cross the two together and create something totally new because i mean how crazy would that be if that's real i mean are they able to create something like that like what kind of world would that even become if there was animal human hybrids running around and you know you could communicate with them and you could it would be no different than you know talking to another human yet you're talking to a guy with a, a goat head, you know, or, or a guy that is half tiger, half human, like how different that would be. And to me, I'm like, it's not totally all the realm of possibility. Cause I'm in other places in the universe. I feel like there's probably some type of alien species out there. That's already done something like that. And they figured out how to cross genetics and create new types of species. And so You know, the fact that they're working on this back in the 1930s and obviously not to the same level as far as we know, but I mean, bark scientists were literally doing this type of genetic research on farm animals in the 1930s. So what, what are scientists doing that we don't know about now? Like what have they been able to accomplish? I mean, it's kind of crazy to think about. So when bark scientists were ramping up their research on these different types of livestock, A man named Dr. Leo Stanley was doing his own version of human animal experiments. He had implanted the testicles of boars, rams, and goats into prisoners, human prisoners, without their knowledge or consent. What the fuck? That's super sick. Like, what do you think is going to happen with that? Well, he believed criminal behavior was biological, and he wanted to change the biology of these prisoners while practicing eugenics by sterilizing men he believes should not be allowed to reproduce. How fucked is that? I mean, I'm all for, you know, punishing people that need to be punished, but how humane is it to take their, you know, sexual organs away from them without them knowing and then replacing them with animal sex organs? Like, think about that. That's just so fucking crazy and just scary, honestly that somebody would do something like this. But because this type of thing was happening, a similar human animal experience at Bark could have resulted in the creation of the Goatman. Dr. Stephen Fletcher is believed to have confessed to conducting DNA research at Bark, and in an experiment that went horribly wrong, he crossed the DNA of a goat with the DNA of his assistant, William Lotsford. And the result of this experiment gone wrong was the creation of a man-goat hybrid with heightened aggression and strength. And unfortunately, as you can probably imagine, if you create something like this, the first thing this thing is going to want to do is escape. And that's exactly what happened according to this story, is that it escaped the laboratory and the men were unable to catch it. So why were they doing this? Well, maybe they were trying to create some type of goat-man hybrid as a part of a military operation, which could explain why this creature had, you know, superhuman strength. I mean, they were doing more than just crossing genetics. They were trying to create some type of almost super soldier, something that could, you know, elude the enemy. Like, can you imagine like if there's 
some type of hybrid human animal being that, you know, can look like a goat one minute and then the next minute it's like ripping your head off, like how dangerous that would be and why there would be legitimate reason for the military to try to develop something like this. Honestly, I kind of believe it. Like why wouldn't they want to create some type of animal human hybrid that's like superhuman has super strength and is super intelligent yet you would never see it coming because it can look like a goat like kind of seems smart to me but basically that's what happened here and i wonder what that transition phase looks like you know for that person did they experience any type of pain when they're transitioning from like a human to a goat or was it instant type of <laughs> transformation? I, I don't know. I've, I'm sure it was I've, very peaceful. <laughs> it was uh, it was just like meditating. No, I'm sure it was fucking horrible. It makes me think of the Hulk movie, right? Like, yeah, exactly. It is similar to all these superhero movies out there. And sometimes I'm like, God, you know, we really get blasted with all these superhero movies all the time. And maybe there's like some truth behind this. Like maybe they are fucking doing this kind of shit. And, you know, crossing DNA and trying to create new types of humans and beings and stuff in order to use them for military purposes. It sounds crazy and it sounds just like a a fantasy and like, oh, it's just Marvel or something. But I'm like, God, if this really happened, then yeah, maybe they did somehow achieve this Goatman. It's very possible. As far as the Goatman's creation story He either came about as a result of, you know, the crossing of DNA of a goat with William Lotsford, or even some people theorize that scientists were just working, you know, with these genetics and they somehow, you know, something went wrong with an experiment and the scientist himself actually became a goat. I mean, obviously we don't know, but you know, there's different theories out there. And that's what's crazy is like what went through that scientist's head to even want to try that on themselves or another person. I mean, what if that's such a big fucking risk? Like so many things can go wrong during that time. So oh, yeah. maybe they were thinking, well, if it goes good, then I'm just going to have all these superpowers and it's only going to benefit my life in a certain way. But you're changing into a creature. I mean, you're you're like no longer human you know i know it's it's really hard to like wrap your head around like why somebody would want to do that but Mm -hmm. you got to think like there there's people doing experiments all the time and you know not all these experiments they know what's going to happen i mean that's why they're experimenting in the first place is they don't know what's going to happen so i i feel like there are these groups and and scientists out there that are constantly trying to push you know push it to the next level and they're willing to take that risk because what if they succeed and what if they find out the way in order to create this type of hybrid being that, you know, they could then sell to the military or something like that. Cause I feel like that is kind of the ultimate goal is like, how do you make the super soldier? Like we know that all of these militaries across the world from different countries have all done very sketchy experiments, done very sketchy things to humans. And, you know, everybody's trying to find that edge. Like what's going to give me that edge in battle? Well, a fucking goat man <laughs> might be that that next big weapon, you know, like who knows? And maybe if they were able to make one, they'd make a whole army of goat men. Again, I don't know exactly why you'd want a goat. Like, right. wouldn't you want a fucking tiger or something to to fight for you? So that whole logic doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. But I don't know. Maybe there's something specific with goats and their DNA that makes them unique, you know, a unique creature. I mean, I know goats are very resilient. That's for sure. I have some goats living in the, in my neighborhood actually. And every time I see them they're they just don't look like they don't look scared at all. That's the thing about them is they're kind of fearless animals. I feel like, like they're not really scared of, of, of much and they're super, super uh, resilient in the fact that they can eat almost anything and survive. So I don't know, maybe there's specific reason for this, but basically as a result of these experiments gone wrong, they now have a half man, half goat, wandering through the woods outside of this facility this bark facility and it has a thirst for violence and bloodshed it's fucking angry i don't know exactly how all the anatomy works with that after you turn into a goat man or if they created this goat man but it's clearly you know based on its dna and whatever else they gave it it's it it wants to wants revenge man it's definitely angry so that is the only thing we really know is that the creation of this goatman has brought terror and mayhem to the people of Maryland who have 
been unfortunate enough to see it. Before we get into some of the sightings of this axe wielding goatman, I want to thank our sponsor for today, Every Plate. Do you like to eat? I love to eat. Well, one of the things that I often struggle with is finding the time to go grocery shopping, plan out a meal, make it, clean up. It always takes way too long and it always ends up costing way more than I expected it to. I was lucky enough to try out the meal service known as Every Plate and they sent me some absolutely delicious recipes. And last night I actually made the creamy Cajun chicken sausage penne pasta and it was seriously bomb. Not only was the food absolutely delicious, I was super impressed by the quality of the ingredients. I mean, they gave me a ton of produce, so much so that I didn't even use all the cloves of garlic that they gave me. So I actually have some leftover garlic for my next meal, but it only took 30 minutes to make. It was super easy. They send you a card. It's got step-by-step instructions. It's, it's foolproof. I mean, I don't know how you can mess these meals up. And I was blown away by how simple it was to make literally ready to go in less than 30 minutes. And it was so good. And I can just taste the quality of the ingredients. It was all fresh. It's, it's not cheap. It doesn't taste bad. It just tasted like a meal you could get at a restaurant yet. It was all delivered right to my door and it was already pre-portioned all ready to just dump into the pan and cook up. So stop spending more money than you need to taking way more time than you need to, to make a home cooked meal when you can get it all delivered right to your door with every plate. Literally one meal is the same price as one cup of coffee, so it's way cheaper than ordering takeout or delivery any day. Plus, what I love is that it actually teaches you how to cook. If you're not great at cooking, that's okay. The recipes are super easy and they give you all the instructions you need to make the meal flawlessly. So if you're interested in checking out every plate, I highly recommend you do. It is definitely worth every penny. And right now, our listeners can get three weeks of every plate meals for only $2.99 per meal by going to everyplate.com and entering code LIGHTSOUT3. Again, you can get three weeks of every plate meals for only $2.99 per meal by going to everyplate.com and entering code LIGHTSOUT3. Give them a try. I promise you won't regret it. All right. So there's been countless stories of people who claim they have seen this terrifying goatman. Several of these stories I'm going to tell you about involve direct interaction or even having been hunted by this terrifying creature. The first recorded accounts were during the summer of 1957, and these reports have been unearthed and studied by Mark Oposnik, a writer and historian who has devoted years of his life to studying the cryptid known as the Goatman. And that summer in 1957, several sightings of a massive beast were reported. It looked like an animal, but it could stand on its hind legs, so essentially on two legs like a human. And some people described it as an evil gorilla-like creature or even a mutated gorilla. It had red beady eyes and was spotted by teenagers and young couples in a wooded area that was a popular hangout spot at the time. In one incident, a teenage couple was parked on Zug Road and they were out in the middle of nowhere with no one else around. When out of nowhere, something started banging on the hood of their car. And when they looked outside, they saw a man-like beast looking directly at them, except it was grasping something in its hand. And that's when these teenagers noticed that it looked like he was holding an ax, or it was holding an ax. In another incident, Mr. and Mrs. Reverdy Gardner of Upper Marlboro were pulling into their driveway when something all of a sudden blocked their path. It was a massive creature resembling a gorilla. It had red eyes and stared intently at them. Mr. Gardner pulled right up to the beast and tapped it with the front bumper. The creature instantly engaged them. Mr. Garner put the car in reverse and sped out of the driveway as this angered creature ran after them. And when a dog was murdered, the residents of Prince George's County lost it. And that's when they organized a massive hunt for this creature. And members of the Upper Marlboro Fire Department and local hunters marched into the woods with shotguns to find and kill whatever this creature was that was terrorizing their kids in the town. And even the Washington Evening Star reported a story on the Goatmen and called it an abominable phantom. The men of the search party searched for days, but they found nothing, no evidence of this creature. And the local police department declared it had been a hoax. And when they were challenged by witnesses that had seen the creature, they blamed the sightings 
and the dead dog on a large chow chow that was rabid and deaf, which a chow chow is an ancient dog breed that was brought to the U.S. in the 1890s. They kind of look like little lions. They're very, very furry. They get very large and their tongues are a deep blue black. And they kind of walk with, you know, with stiff legs somewhat. And if there was a rabid deaf chow chow wandering through the woods of Maryland, odds are it probably would have looked pretty scary. And the people that were searching for the creature ended up believing that this was exactly what was going on. It was just this, you know, a rabid dog or something like that wandering through the woods. So they decided to call off the hunt and they stopped searching for the goatmen. But the legend of the goatmen did not cease to exist there. In fact, it continued to grow over time through hushed whispers and scary campfire stories. During the 1960s, there were several prominent sightings and multiple violent encounters. One particular sighting in the 1960s involved a young couple who was parked on Fletchertown Road in Bowie, and they kept seeing something move in the shadows near the woods, and they felt as if they were being watched. Because whatever this thing is, it definitely stalks people. The young man decided to see what it was or who it was thinking it might be a peep and Tom that was watching him and his girl make out or even more. So he decided to go off into the woods and take a peek around and see, make sure no one was there. And once he did, his lady waited and waited, but this young man did not return. Eventually she got out of the car and left as well. And when she didn't hear from him all night, she decided to report him missing. A search party was dispatched to go into the woods around Fletcher town road the next day. And after a short while, they found this young man's severed head hanging from a tree in a pool of blood in the dirt below, which is very, very weird. Definitely don't, don't see that every day. And after extensive searching, the search party never found his body. In 1962, it's believed that a large group of hikers came upon the cave where the goatmen lived. It was mostly children, but there was a few adult chaperones with them. And infuriated by this intrusion of his privacy, showing up to his home unannounced, the goatman used his axe to murder the hikers and chop them up, killing 12 children and two adults. The few who got away went to the police, and when investigators went to the cave, they were horrified by what they found. Blood, entrails, and hacked up limbs were scattered across the ground. There was also a trail of blood leading into the cave. The survivors of the attack described to investigators the noise the goatman made during the attack as a noise only the devil could make himself. And this sparked the belief that the goatman was actually the devil or perhaps a demon sent from hell. Now, this is very interesting to me because, you know, if we've we talked about Satanism before and we've talked about how, you know, their belief system a little bit, but it's interesting because in the actual, you know, official symbol for it, there, you know, Baphomet is, you know, often looks like a goat, you know, the head of a goat and there's, a, you know, a man's body. So it's, it's very interesting that, you know, I'm not saying there's any correlation between Satanism and the goat men, but it's interesting that these individuals thought that maybe they were dealing with the devil himself. If the devil is real or Satan is real, maybe this is the actual form that he takes. I mean, we don't know, but it's definitely a scary thought to think about. In the summer of 1963, a couple was walking in the woods in Huntington, Maryland, about 30 miles from Bowie. And as they were walking, they felt like they were being watched by something and they started looking around. And that's when the woman spotted a tall creature hiding among the trees. It had human features though, and looked disheveled. And they couldn't tell if it was a person or some type of large animal, but it definitely appeared to have elements of both. Another man who's claimed to have seen the Goatman is named John M. Roman. And when he was a young boy in 1967, he specifically remembers seeing the Goatman as a scary man who just simply resembled a goat. Him and his friends believed that the Goatman wandered between Glendale and Bowie. And at the time, these towns were bordered by railroad tracks. And a primary spot to see the Goatman was Fletcherton Road and nearby Bell Station Road. The Goatman was also seen by the Cleary family who lived in Mitchellville, about seven miles from Bowie, when they reported seeing a large, scruffy creature outside their house, and they believed it to be the Goatman. 
A girl named Susie, who at the time was a high school student who lived on Fletcherton Road with her parents and siblings, and their mother would call them inside before dusk because she was worried that the goatmen could get them. And at night, Susie and her family would hear something howling outside, and sometimes they even heard crying. In 1970, a woman tied her dog up outside for the night and went inside the house, and after a while, she started hearing the dog barking, and that's when she looked out the window and saw a dark figure near the dog. The woman was terrified to her core and couldn't bring herself to go outside. So she waited until sunrise to go out and check on her dog. What kind of fucking dog owner are you? And to her horror, the dog's head had been ripped clean off of the body. So clearly, this goatman likes to rip the heads off of anything specifically, which is very, very scary and just weird. Like, why? In April of 1971, a farmer in Huntington, Maryland reported seeing a huge unknown figure with horns on his land and the farmer said it was squatting on the ground like a human ripping the flesh from a dead pig with its jagged teeth and when the creature saw the farmer it ran off into the woods but sightings of the goatman continued that year with one of the most notorious stories of all on the evening of november 3rd 1971 two young men william gein and john hayden were hanging out the home of mr and mrs daniels and their daughter april in Bowie, Maryland. William was renting a room from the family and he invited his brother-in-law John over to hang out. Just before dusk, they heard something strange outside in the darkness. It was a high-pitched squealing noise. April's new puppy, a German shepherd named Ginger, was kept out in a pen in the backyard. And that's when John and William saw a dark, unsettling figure in the field behind the house, across from the pen central railroad tracks. It looked like an animal, because they could see fur covering its body. But then it stood upright, like a man, at least six feet tall. And then all of a sudden the noise stopped, and the figure disappeared. And they figured, ah, it must have just been my mind playing tricks on me. April, who was 16 years old at the time, happened to have a group of friends over at her house that night. The girls also heard the same strange high-pitched sound, and saw a tall figure moving in the darkness. The next morning, Ginger wasn't in her pen. Poor puppy. Mrs. Daniels asked William and John to look for her. And they all assumed that Ginger had probably just escaped from her pen and they'd find her wandering through the neighborhood. So the two men cut through the backyard to get to the railroad tracks to start their search. And they had barely stepped out of the backyard when they saw something in the distance. It was a mass of fur with visible fangs sticking out the side. At first, they thought it must be some type of rabid animal. But as they got closer, they started to recognize what this ball of fur was. Sadly, it was the severed head of Angela's puppy, Ginger. Ginger's head had been removed cleanly, not chewed or bitten off, and her body was nowhere to be found. John and William continued to search for the body, but it was never recovered. And after this happened, it didn't take long for the news of Ginger's grisly death to spread throughout the town. The residents of Bowie were terrified. They refused to let their children or pets outside unsupervised, and everyone was looking over their shoulders waiting for the next attack. I mean, this is actually really scary to think about. I mean, if it's not the Goatman, then what is it? I mean, that's that's creepy. I mean, I, I think we'd all be freaked out if, you know, so an, even a neighbor's dog was reported to having its head ripped off cleanly, not bitten, not chewed off by some other animal. You know, you'd think, well, why'd they leave a puppy out in the backyard at night? That's my first question. But, you know, if a coyote had gotten it, you know, a coyote is not going to rip its head off. Most animals aren't going to cleanly rip the head off of a, uh, an animal like that and then just take the body and leave the head. Like, that's very, very weird. But as you can imagine, this, this was uh, kind of big news in the town. And the story was covered almost immediately by Karen Halsler of Prince George County News. Karen had actually already written about the Goatman for the newspaper, along with several other local legends. And when she covered the story of Ginger the Puppy, the headline read, Residents Fear Goatman Lives, Dog Found Decapitated in Old Bowie. On November 30th, the Washington Post picked up the story of the headline, A Legendary Figure Haunts Remote Prince George's Woods, which this was really the first time that kind of the rest of the nation was hearing about this Goatman that was terrorizing the people of Maryland. After this incident, strange things continued happening. Property was destroyed. Graffiti that said Goatman was here and dripping red paint started appearing all over town. Even parked cars were vandalized. 
more and more people said they saw a huge creature run through their yard or driveway and it had a human's torso and posture but the legs and head were of a goat not only that it had horns and was covered in wiry hair but it wasn't clear if it was the body hair or it was actual fur but all these sightings and all of these incidents had people totally convinced that this goatman was out there so people started hunting for it they'd even take their little kids out or relatives to look for the creature which is very weird it's like why would you want to take your kids to go look for a goatman that's beheading things like that doesn't seem too smart to me at all but maybe you know i bet there are some people that are like oh it's just bullshit like you know let's this is fun you know this is kind of a fun fantasy to think about so you know let's get the kids out and hop in the car and go to the hot spots of where the goat men, maybe we'll see them. So that's what people started doing. I think once the goat man made national news, like everyone's curiosity was like booming over it. And I don't know, it's just hard to believe that after that, somehow everyone for the most part started reporting sightings of it. And you know, the whole vandalizing cars and buildings and stuff. I mean, to me, that makes me think there could be people contributing to the whole conspiracy to like blow it out of proportion like this is a huge problem or something but i guess it does kind of make sense how there's people wanting to hunt for it because think about it like if you were the one to kill the goat man and like bring it back (laughs) how much (laughs) fear you'd have you'd be like a superhero saving the town you know yeah i mean you'd be like probably hero of the nation like yeah you know if you really captured a half man half goat that'd be pretty impressive It'd i think be a big I, deal. I think you you yeah you would be a big <laughs> deal you'd be a hometown hero for sure so yeah i think and i think you brought up a good point like obviously some of this vandalism and people right and goatman was here and bloody red you know paint was probably not the goatman i'm mm-hmm. pretty sure he's probably not you know doing that maybe he was i mean who knows but obviously people want to you know create more story and substance around this so and they want a a piece of the action so definitely could have been just people doing all that shit you know or you know people thinking they see the goat men and you know it's just their their neighbor or something yeah it could be something completely different because i feel like anytime there's this kind of you know legend of this everybody wants to see it i know for me like whenever i go to the mountains i'm like god i hope i see bigfoot or something (laughs) you know you or you know you go you know, out in the middle of nowhere, look up at the stars. You're like, I hope a UFO just lands right in front of me. And so, yeah, I think, I think with anything like this, people oftentimes see things or start seeing, you know, whatever this uh, entity or, you know, cryptid is, you know, more often because everybody's looking for Mm -hmm. it. You know, you're, when you're looking for it, sometimes you start seeing things that aren't necessarily there. So that could have definitely been happening. After every Friday night football game, dozens of teens would head out to Fletcherton Road to drink, party, and of course, search for the good old Goatman. The residents of the street put up with years of noise, trespassing, and littered beer cans as a result of the Goatman. But it wasn't just the teens who were out on the lookout for the Goatman. Men formed hunting parties and patrolled the woods around Fletcherton Road. One woman who lived on the road, Evelyn Johnson, was frustrated by the constant disturbances and once even called the police to move a group of hunters blocking her from getting to her house. And the men claimed when she said, move, get the fuck out of my way. I'm trying to get to my house. They claimed that they had the goatman cornered. And obviously with all this going on, the local media is like, yes, something to report about. So they were out there reporting on all the sightings and just adding more fuel to the fire that there was this savage goatman out on the loose. But 27 years after John Hayden and William Gein found the decapitated head of Ginger the puppy, John's older brother Ray claimed the whole thing was just made up to scare Mrs. Daniels. John, who's now 48 years old, is still adamant that he saw what he saw, and he's pissed that his brother doesn't believe him still. Angela, the owner of Ginger, has also maintained that the story is completely true. She saw something outside, and whatever it was, it murdered her dog. Ray, however, has also said that the real Goatman was a mentally ill homeless man named Abel or Albert or Thompson, and this man was supposedly buried in a small cemetery outside Ascension Catholic Church in Bowie, where he visited and cried at his mother's grave. The cemetery is about 50 yards wide and long, and amongst the modest headstones and white crosses, 
there is no one buried there named Abel, Albert, or Thompson. So uh, that version of events doesn't really pan out too well with Ray. In September of 1976, the landscaper who worked at the Woodmore Country Club in Woodmore, Maryland, was near Lotsford Road when he found an animal's remains. It had been ripped to shreds. When he got closer to it to inspect it, he heard a low growling sound. And when he looked up, he saw a figure on a nearby hill. It was a large goat-like creature with human features. In October 1985, a group of local teenagers were hanging out near the old Glendale hospital site when they heard some savage growling. And this hospital was a state tuberculosis sanatorium. And when a police officer checked it out, he heard the same menacing noises. And many people believed that whatever this thing was, it was the Goatman. In 1986, the student newspaper at Bowie High School ran a story about the Goatman, leaving a paper mache dog head as a threat in front of the school. The student journalist Jennifer Joyner elaborated on the story naming the Goatman had evil friends like Hitler, Sasquatch, and Satan. Imagine that. A few years later, in May of 1988, a few teenagers were hanging out near the woods in their usual spot. As they talked and drank, they saw something dart through the woods. Thinking it might be a friend playing a prank on them, they started wandering through the woods to find out what it was. And that's when, in the darkness, they came upon a tall, human-like figure with horns. And once it saw them, it ran away into the woods. Which is interesting because I would think the goat man, once he got those people out in the woods, like that's his territory. I mean, he has full seclusion of what whatever he wants to do to it. But it's just weird how in some cases it's just killing people. In other cases, the goat man just runs away in terror. Like, yeah, it's like picking and choosing yeah, its prey or something. It's like, what's it scared of? You can literally fuck anybody yeah. up, dude. Like, come on now. Yeah, yeah. Very, very weird. It's crazy to think that over all these years, everybody is potentially seeing the Goatman. Because then on a sunny afternoon in August of 1990, some kids were playing ball during a birthday party in Magruder Park in Hydesville, Maryland. And when the ball they were playing with went into the woods, one of the kids ran after it. And as he approached the trees, he was terrified to see what he called a huge monster in a clearing. All of a sudden, the boy started screaming and his mother rushed over to see what was wrong. And he told her what he had seen. The same dark creature with red eyes who stood in the corner of his room at night is what the boy said. That's that's frightening to think about. Like, this goatman, it could potentially be going inside of homes. I mean, God. But it kind of makes me think maybe this boy saw something paranormal that looks like a goat because I just can't wrap my head around why a goat would go into a child's room and just stand there and stare at him at night, you know? Right. That's if true. its whole purpose is to bring the axe and have some bloodshed, it, yeah, that just doesn't that's make true. any sense. That's true. But some some people do say that this goatman is a shapeshifter too, that it's able to take on oh. multiple forms. Right. It's kind of a, a popular thing with with some cryptids is that they're able to shape shift in between, mm -hmm. you know, different forms of of, you know, beings in some way. So maybe it's able to take, you know, a shadow form or something like that. Potentially. I mean, who knows? But just one thought. Shortly after that incident, some local teens were hanging out near a bridge one night in Bowie, Maryland, when they saw something moving in the woods. A few of the teens decided to go after it. And that's when they saw a human-like animal in the woods about seven to eight feet tall running on two legs through the trees. One thing that is for certain, though, is that there's been countless witnesses over the years who have claimed to have seen the Goatman. And many times, the Goatman has been blamed for missing pets or even missing or mutilated livestock, which is very interesting because I just think of cattle mutilations. And a lot of times, cattle mutilations are associated with you know UFOs and aliens and abductions and things like that. But maybe, you know cryptids have something to do with these mutilations of livestock and in maryland maybe it's the goatman in some personal accounts witnesses have reported seeing the goatman throwing dogs off an overpass while making a terrible howling sound that's scary the goatman has also been blamed for a number of missing or murdered people because it's rumored that the goatman captures and kills anyone who gets a good look at him there's even a few local spots in Maryland who have had consistent sightings and stories that span across multiple decades. St. Mark the Evangelist School, a middle school in Hydesville, Maryland, is one place known by locals for multiple sightings of the Goatman, 
and for even finding evidence of his presence. Behind the school is an abandoned house that sat vacant for at least 30 years. Residents and students claim the Goatman frequently stays in the house and stalks the children of the school. People have even found evidence of the Goatman outside the house, including saws, knives, and bones. Occasionally, a brave soul will venture into the house and find animal carcasses and stolen scraps of food inside. The Governor's Bridge is another hotspot for the Goatman. It's a historic single-lane bridge across the Patuxent River near Bowie. The locals call it the Crybaby Bridge because of a story of a young mother who went crazy, who threw her baby off of the bridge. And it's well known that if you go under the bridge at night and sit very, very still, you might hear a baby crying, or even the distinct scream of a goat. <laughs> Fucking love oh, that. Oh, that's amazing. Remember that? Yeah. You remember no. seeing that go around online? Oh, that's Dude, so funny. That's hilarious. But a goat screaming is fucking scary. It sounds <laughs> yeah. like a human screaming. It does. So apparently under the crybaby bridge, that's what you hear. Maybe you even hear the Taylor Swift version too. <laughs> <laughs> but some people have even seen the goat men while sitting under the bridge late at night. And there's even times where the stories of the goat men gets even darker and more insidious than the decapitated puppy. Some people claim the goat men has kidnapped young women who have no sexual experience. And these women are then chained up somewhere deep in the woods and sexually tortured by the goatmen. In another story, a search party headed out one morning to find a missing police officer who disappeared on horseback. And deep inside the woods, they found the horse's severed head and the horse's skinned legs nearby. But the horse's body and the missing police officer were never found. The goatman has also been attributed to the classic Lover's Lane horror story on multiple occasions. And the story goes that the boy leaves the car to check out a strange noise. And when he doesn't return, the girl gets scared. She then hears a dripping sound on top of the car's roof from outside. So she hesitantly steps out of the car to see what the noise is. And that's when she sees her murdered boyfriend hanging from a tree. And the sound she was hearing was his blood dripping down onto the roof. But over all these decades, the Goatman has managed to stay relevant. Because in 2007, a camera crew for NBC Washington, D.C., was covering a golf tournament in Glenarden, Maryland. And while they were filming, something darted in the nearby trees, and one of the cameramen turned just in time to catch a split second of video. But when looking at the image, it just looks like a black mass of something. Uh, the, it's very pixelated, so you can't really make out any sort of details whatsoever. I mean, I don't know if I would look at that and think Goatman. I mean, if anything, I kind of look at that and think Sasquatch or like Bigfoot or something. <laughs> yeah. Or, I, I mean, who knows? I mean, there's not enough detail there to really tell what it is. Yeah, it just looks like a shadow. And to the right, like, it's yeah, kind of the same, same color, color yeah, yeah, a little yeah. bit. So it could be, like, depending on fa how fast that picture was taken, maybe some sway in the camera or something. Totally, yeah. Yeah, it could just be a bunch of bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just a blur or some blurb of something. But what's interesting is that WBAL NBC Baltimore has received two emails in recent years about Goatman sightings. One email is from a woman who saw a strange animal that looked like Sasquatch with large horns in Montpelier Park in Laurel, Maryland. The second email was from a man who saw a bear, but he made a point of saying that the animal is large and on its hind legs like a bear, but it didn't look like one. He said it looked more like a goat standing upright. So maybe these people are seeing the goatman and maybe they're not. But I mean, with most cryptids out there it's a great opportunity for you know the making of a film about it and to you know really make some entertainment and one particular individual named herbert moran in 2014 actually wrote and directed a short film based on the legend of the goatman using a group of friends as actors and we'll put the link below it's a vimeo link and you can actually watch the short film the film was actually shot in bryson texas and it's a retelling of a classic creepypasta called anansi's goatman story which if you haven't checked out creepypasta, I'm sure pretty much everyone out there has, especially if you're a fan of the show. A lot of these creepypastas are, you know, overly embellished legends, myths, and folk tales, and just, you know, a lot of made up stuff. But these stories have to come from somewhere, and many of them may be more real than many people believe. Anansi is a 16-year-old girl who was camping with her family when they encountered the goatman. One detail that Anansi's story adds to the legend is a distinct electric smell when in the presence of the goatman. And honestly, this creepypasta, Anansi's story is uh, very, very spooky for sure. And uh, I'll put a link for it if you want to read through it. It's uh, actually pretty chilling. 
But one of the reasons people may be so drawn to this concept of the goat men is because of the history of the goat in mythology. In Greco-Roman times, the satyr is a woodland god known for being drunk and lustful. The satyr has the torso of a man with the legs of a goat. The head is human, but has animal-like ears and horns. There's also been a number of cults associated with satyr, where the cult leaders have even dressed like a goat and encouraged members to drink and eat the flesh of live animals. So, I mean, and, and like I said earlier, I mean, the Baphomet, there's a, there's a lot of examples in, in history and mythology of, you know, a half man, half, half goat out there. So perhaps, you know, maybe that's where a lot of this ideas are originating from. So let's talk about, is the goat men real? Could the goat men have been a result of a science experiment at Bark? Sure, but there are some other prominent theories about its origin. Some people believe there was once an old goat herder who was deeply devoted to his herd. He loved his goats and kept excellent care of them. They were basically his reason for existing. One night, some teenagers trespassing on his land slaughtered his goats. And when the goat herder found his beloved goats dead the next morning, it drove him mad. He became a recluse, took up an axe, and vowed his revenge. And for decades, he roamed the woods at night, wreaking havoc. The man would kill goats and then skin them, and then he wore their pelts all over his body. And every chance he got, he tormented teens and young people. He killed pets and hacked parked cars with his axe. And some people believe that the goatman was an escaped mental patient, or perhaps this guy. Probably the most prominent theory of all is that the goatman is a cryptid. You know, it's an animal that we can't necessarily prove, but we can't necessarily disprove with science that it doesn't exist. But obviously, the majority of people out there believe that because cryptozoology doesn't really follow the scientific method or you know some cryptozoologists out there don't it's considered pseudoscience so it's not really recognized as a real you know sub category of zoology it's definitely categorized as folklore but there's been a lot of individuals who have spent their whole career studying cryptids and the paranormal so you know i would say it's legitimate to a, a lot of extents i mean obviously they're studying things that are you know, there's not a lot of scientific evidence for, but it means no different than the paranormal. A paranormal investigator is studying things that are unknown and, you know, we can't understand with modern science. So just because science can't explain it doesn't mean that it's not real or it doesn't exist. We just can't prove that it exists or that it's real. But that doesn't mean we should stop from studying it. And luckily, there's been a number of people over the years who have devoted their entire lives to studying cryptids like the Goatman and Bigfoot. There's also a theory out there that maybe the goatman is Bigfoot or it's of the same species as Bigfoot. You know, if there is these unknown species out there that we haven't really discovered like Bigfoot, that maybe, you know, these cryptids somehow learned how to walk and they kind of walk very similarly, Bigfoot and goatman. And obviously both of them are covered in wiry hair, so it'd be very easy to confuse the two together. And both Bigfoot and goatman have been heard making eerie squealing noises and most importantly, each of these creatures is known for attacking dogs. Bigfoot is well known for hating dogs, and obviously the Goatman doesn't seem to be a fan either. But some people believe that the Goatman is just a story made up by parents to keep their kids from playing in the woods at night, or maybe it's just a story people made up in order to tell over those campfires and sleepovers. Cryptids are really hard because obviously it could definitely be just made up. It could just be, you know, made up bullshit and just things that people you know claim they saw they really were seeing something else or maybe they didn't see anything at all but again i think there's it's definitely something that should be studied i mean why not study cryptozoology i mean people have literally spent their whole lives studying this subject uh, including men like terence sanderson and bernard hovelmans who actually abandoned their zoology careers in order to you know study cryptozoology and try to figure out if you know these are just fairy tales or if there is some validity to these sightings that people are claiming to be bigfoot or the goatman or any other type of cryptid some people even believe that you know the goatman could be supernatural completely i mean we mentioned that maybe the goatman is a demon or the devil and perhaps you know that that's exactly what it is and that's just what why people see it and then it's gone some even have theorized that the goatman was created as part of a satanic ritual or it's even possible that the Goatman could be a being from outer space or another dimension that's stranded here and, you know, trying to find a way back and, or it's just here to wreak havoc on everything. But there's even a possibility that the Goatman could go back even farther in history than most people think. 
The Piscataway people are a Native American tribe who actually lived in the same region where the Goatman has been most often seen in the 16th century. In 1633, a Jesuit priest named Father Andrew White left England with several fellow priests and servants to voyage to the New World. And four months after leaving, they finally made it to the coast of North America. And once they settled in present-day Maryland, Father White started meeting with the Native American tribes right away. He made an effort to learn their languages and kept detailed records of his time with them. And in his writing, Father White explains that the Piscataway people's belief in a shape-shifting creature that can take the form of various animals. Like we mentioned earlier, maybe this is a shape-shifting creature that can take multiple forms. And the priest included a drawing of the shape-shifter that looked like a large, fur-covered man with animal-like qualities. So if this creature exists, it could be an early descendant of the Goatman. But the theory that still holds the most weight is that the Goatman came from the Beltsville Agricultural Research Center during a failed or maybe even perhaps a successful human-animal experiment. In January 2020, actually, the USDA released a report recommending the demolition of several buildings from the research campus. Among these buildings is 435A, an isolated pole barn that stands away from the other 400 cluster buildings. This structure is associated with building 434, the infamous goat barn, which was left completely vacant in 2008. Since building 434 is a contributing feature of the Bark Historic District, it can't just be torn down. So under a revised assessment in July 2020, the USDA recommended renovating and expanding the goat barn to create a new poultry quarantine house. And this project was approved and is moving forward. According to the Bark Campus's most recent available map, building 435A has been demolished and building 434, the goat barn, is not even listed. That's a little suspicious. I mean, they're could be nothing to that but i do find it very weird that of course the goat barn the infamous goat barn is now gone after being isolated and abandoned for so long maybe even was the birthplace of the goatman but now it seems like it's been completely either torn down and rebuilt or it's just demolished completely so maybe the answer to this question of the goatman could be lost forever so with that being said is the goatman real or is it just all a made up story the theory that I agree with the most is that the goat man came from a science experiment that went wrong. Um, just because like the other theory mentioning that the goat man has possibly been around since 1633 just doesn't make much sense to me because if that was the case, then the goat man would be immortal in my opinion, or just able to live outlive any human being like a whole nother species that I've never seen before. And that's the thing. It being a science experiment gone wrong may explain why we don't hear about the goat man today. And we don't hear about new experiences because if it was a human being that was morphed into a goat, then they should have kept that same human being lifespan to where, you know, they passed away after a normal period of time, which makes me think is why we don't hear about the goat man anymore. So, yeah, yeah, that's, that's definitely possible. I think, I think rather it's, you know, like if it's not the goat man that, you know, was birthed out of this mad experiment gone wrong, then maybe it is, you know, this creature known as shapeshifters which, you know, there's a lot of Native American tribes out there that do believe in these types of creatures out there. So maybe perhaps, you know, all of these cryptids that we're seeing are in fact just shapeshifters and they're, you know, taking different forms. And that's why we report seeing different, you know, creatures and hybrid creatures that look like these different animals is because in fact they are morphing into different things. And, you know, that's why we see them and we don't. So, yeah, I don't know. There's, there's a lot of different theories to this one, but I think this idea of, you know, an animal human hybrid experiment gone wrong is very interesting. And, you know, maybe, maybe the goat men really did come from, you know, this bark complex because it sure sounds like they were doing some, you know, different testing there and some weird things with genetics and, you know, trying to, you know, the idea of taking animal sex organs and putting it into a human is just really, really sick and weird. Mm -hmm. It's just, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if, there was stuff like that going on. So I don't know at the end of the day, I think it's really up in the air. I mean, obviously there's not a ton of evidence or physical hard proof for the Goatman, but I mean, these people were seeing something and you know, a lot of their eyewitness accounts are very similar uh, in description and things like that. And obviously I think some of it was, you know, people seeing either ordinary things or maybe, 
you know, they were confused about, you know, what they were actually saying, or they just made it up completely as, you know, people tend to do, but I don't know, but this idea of cryptids is very interesting. And I think there, you know, maybe there is something to it. Maybe there is, you know, some type of, you know, half animal, half human type creature, you know, lurking in our forest. I mean, definitely makes you think twice about going out into the woods, you know, by yourself or unarmed because you never know what you're going to encounter out there. So I know it definitely makes me think uh, <laughs> a little bit more about going out into the wilderness. Oh, definitely. Definitely wouldn't go by myself. That's that's for sure. And you should never go trekking into the woods by yourself, period. Uh, you don't know what's out there, or who's out there. So uh, yeah, but with that being said, definitely let us know your thoughts on the Goatman. Uh, do you believe the Goatman's real or do you think uh, the Goatman is a, a just a nice, nice story? So let us know, but we'll go ahead and wrap up today's episode of the Lights Out podcast there. We got a especially dark one coming at you next week, so uh, get ready for that. But yeah, make sure you guys are subscribed and uh, you know follow us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. We'd really appreciate it. Check out the merch, and yeah, if you uh, haven't tried Every Plate, definitely check out uh, Every Plate. It's really good stuff. But on until uh, next time, lights out, everybody.